Hello friend, in today's lecture we are going to talk about uh, the solubility. We all use volatile anesthetics to deliver anesthesia. Volatile anesthetics are delivered through the uh, breathing system from where it reaches the lungs and uh, from lungs it reaches the brain causing anesthesia. And we're going to discuss how this happens and what are the factors that go on. So the induction recovery from anesthesia is governed by the blood and tissue solubility of the volatile anesthetics, which in turn governs the increase and decrease in the alveolar concentration. We know the alveolar concentration equates with the brain concentration. So if brain concentration increases, patient goes to sleep. Brain concentration decreases, patient wakes up. So this uh, graph actually shows with time how various agents are actually taken up. This is also known as the washing curve for uh, anesthetics, volatile anesthetics. They're delivered through the alveoli from where they're absorbed into the pulmonary circulation and then they reach the brain and other tissues. So the ratio of the uh, uh, you know, the uh, alveolar to the inspired concentration uh, buildup uh, or uptake is uh, dependent on the solubility of the world anesthetic agent, on the cardiac output, and the LVR to the venous partial pressure. So, uptake is equal to the product of the solubility, the cardiac output, and the uh, alveolar to venous uh, partial pressure divided by the barometric pressure. So if you look at various agents, their uh, MAC uh, is dependent on the oil gas solubility and the uptake uh, from the uh, lungs is dependent on the blood gas solubility. So for example, for nitrous oxide, the oil gas solubility is 1.4. It is less soluble uh, because its blood gas solubility is 0 0.47 and hence it equilibrates very quickly. Whereas halothane has got a very high blood gas solubility, sorry, oil gas solubility, 220, and hence it uh, is taken up slowly. And also, and that is because blood gas solubility is 2.3, and because it has got a high oil gas solubility, uh, it actually remains in the tissues, but it's taken up by the fatty tissues and it slowly leached out. So the recovery from uh, the halothane is a little slower. Uh, saying that, it's not exactly uh, that. It's that if you were to measure the, uh, uh, you know, uh, concentration of expired volt anesthetic, uh, halothane lingers on into the breath for four days. We can uh, uh, measure very small quantities in the brain because uh, in the breath because of this reason. So these values are important for you to know and uh, for the exam purposes as well and for the MCQs. So how much amount of a volatile anesthetic uh, dissolves uh, or is taken up is governed by Henry's law. So at a particular temperature, uh, the amount of a given gas dissolved in a given liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas in equilibrium with the liquid. So, if you look at again uh, the various agents, <clears throat> uh, we look at uh, the uh, alveolar to the inspired concentration ratio. It reaches very quickly with nitrous oxide and desferrin, uh, but it takes longer with seoferrin, isoferrin, halothane. And like I explained, it is depends on the blood gas solubility of the, uh, you know, the agents. So the blood gas solubility, if you go back uh, to look at the nitrous oxide, it's actually uh, quite low, uh, 0 0.42, uh, whereas for desperate is 0 0.45. Uh, now these uh, values, mat, you know, are different in different textbooks. So. Uh, you might actually see that, but there's slight difference in them. Uh, they are basically very low 
when it is higher for halothane and isoforin. Uh, so the washing of the halothane and isoforin is slower as compared to that of uh, nitrous oxide and desferin. So when we breathe uh, nitrous oxide, it's very, it's less soluble. So it's very quickly creates uh, with the brain and there's hardly anything going into the muscle viscera or fat. But if you look at uh, sevoflurane yeah. or halothane or other volatile anesthetic agent, they need to, uh, you know, get in equilibrium with the uh, brain. And that's what I've shown that Fa or by Fi, the fraction of alveolar to the fraction of inspired concentration depends on the blood gas solubility. But uh, how much amount reaches the muscle viscera of fat uh, depend on their uh, fat or the uh, blood oil uh, or oil gas solubility. So if you look at the uh, seoflurane, uh, yes, it will equilibrate uh, with the brain uh, pretty quickly, um, uh, much quicker than uh, halothane or isoflurane. Uh, but it will also be taken up, depending on the duration of anesthesia, is also be taken up by muscle and viscera and fat as well. And uh, that's why when you actually are uh, going to measure the concentration of volatile anesthetic in the breath, it can still remain for 24 to 48 hours. Very small concentration can still be detected uh, because it's gone to the fat and it will be leached out slowly. So... The uh, amount of gas which actually dissolves uh, in the liquid phase or in the blood depends uh, not only on the partial pressure, but also depends on the temperatures. So if you look at a particular gas, you will see that uh, at uh, a higher uh, pressures, more amount of gas is dissolved. So the, the partial pressure of the gas increases, uh, the solubility increases. Sorry, the amount of gas dissolved increases. And uh, with the same, uh, if the temperature actually is uh, increased, the amount of dissolved gas at the same partial pressure is lower. And that's why we see that the fizzy drinks are actually better uh, if they're kept cold. You can maintain the fizziness in there. Okay. Uh, so you can enjoy it. So... Uh, cold fizzy drinks uh, will have more dissolved carbon dioxide uh, than a warm fizzy drink. So, if you look at uh, various agents, the amount of uh, the uh, you know the agent dissolved, uh, for example, nitrogen uh, at 20 degrees uh, in a liter uh, will dissolve. 16 mLs will dissolve at 100 kPa or at the atmospheric pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury. So it's only 16 mL of nitrogen. But if the temperature is increased, uh, this amount falls to 14 mL of nitrogen. So as temperature increases, the amount of the dissolved gas reduces. But if you look at a different agent, so in case of uh, nitrous oxide at 37 degrees Celsius uh, at body temperature, the amount of nitrous oxide dissolved in water is 390 mL. <clears throat> so nitrogen was on only 14 mL, nitrous oxide is 390 mL. Now what about if we change this uh, liquid phase from water to blood? So the amount of nitrous oxide that dissolved in one liter of blood at 37 degrees and Celsius is 470 mL. So you look at in the water is 390 mL, in the blood it is 470 mL. So <clears throat> the solubility of a gas not only depends on the partial pressure and the temperature, but it also depends on the liquid concern. Since we're talking about the partial pressures, we also need to know the law which governs it, and the law that governs it is called the Dalton's law. So Dalton's law of partial pressure basically states that in a mixture of a gas, the pressure exerted by each gas is the same as that which it would exert if it alone occupied the container. So I'll show this by uh, two examples. 
So let's say uh, we take uh, a cylinder uh, with Antonox at uh, the uh, uh, 100 kPa, atmospheric pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, so it has got 50% of oxygen and 50% of nitrous oxide. So if we take the same oxygen, or, or let's separate them out in the same volume of then what will happen is because of Boyle's law, because uh, pressure uh, and, and volume is constant, uh, this volume will likely occupy greater space. And because it's, it's occupies greater space, uh, because of volume increases, the pressure will decrease. So the same amount of oxygen which was there in the Antonox cylinder now will likely have lower pressure. So it is half to 50 kPa. And same thing happens with nitrous oxide. But if you look at the total pressure, the total pressure is 50 kPa. So in the Antonox cylinder, oxygen will be actually be, uh, you know, contributing to 50 kPa pressure and nitrous oxide will be contributing to 50 uh, kPa pressure. And so this uh, is known as Dalton's law. Same thing with air. So here we have 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Separate it out. Okay, oxygen will likely uh, uh, now uh, will now in the same amount of volume uh, will exert a pressure of 21 kPa, and whereas nitrogen will exert a pressure of 79 kPa. So the total of that is equal to the amount of pressure exerted by both in the uh, same cylinder. That is 100 kPa. So if you look at uh, the partial pressure, the uh, dry air is composed of uh, oxygen, 20.98% oxygen, 0.04% carbon dioxide, 78.06% <coughs> nitrogen, and 0.92% of other inert constituents such as argon and helium. And we know that the barometric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, or it's also known as one atmospheric pressure or 100 kPa, because it's 100 kPa, it makes it easier uh, to uh, convert uh, the constants uh, into percentage. So the partial pressure is indicated by symbol P uh, of oxygen. In dry air is uh, 0 0.21 into 760 or 160 mm Hg at uh, sea level, right? So that's, you know, in millimeters of mercury. Uh, whereas the partial pressure of nitrogen would be then 0 0.76 into 760 or 600 millimeters of mercury. So the air we breathe uh, is composed of oxygen uh, at 158 millimeters of mercury. Carbon dioxide is only 0 0.3 millimeters of mercury. Water of 5.7 millimeters of mercury. This will vary uh, with the humidity. And uh, nitrogen uh, is at 596 millimeters mercury. So total is equal to one atmospheric pressure that is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And uh, in the uh, alveoli, uh, the, also the uh, if you look at the partial pressure of nitrogen is reduced to 573, and the uh, partial pressure of water increases to 47, and that's because of the uh, warm humidified gases we breathe. And the carbon dioxide is being uh, pumped into the alveoli uh, to be expired out, so that also increases. But the total uh, partial pressure in alveoli uh, still remains at 760. And but as it goes into the circulation, uh, this partial pressure, total partial pressure, drops to 725. And we know this happens because of the oxygen cascade. It goes to the tissue level. Uh, the oxygen is utilized. Uh, carbon dioxide uh, increases and the partial pressure drops to 706. And uh, <coughs> uh, this remains till it reaches the alveoli. So in all that, you can actually see that the partial pressure of nitrogen is constant. It is 573 uh, throughout. Uh, this graph actually shows the uh, transit time uh, for carbon dioxide, sorry, carbon monoxide, oxygen, and nitrous oxide uh, in a pulmonary capillary. And so the usual transit time is 0 0.75 seconds. 
and we can see that nitrous oxide because it's less soluble in blood it uh, uh, equilibrates very very quickly it's taken up very quickly in less than 0 0.25 seconds whereas the oxygen uh, you know equilibrates within 0 0.25 seconds when it's carbon monoxide which is highly soluble uh, it does not uh, actually equilibrate that quickly uh, I also know that the carbon dioxide is used for measuring the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the diffusion across the lungs. Uh, so you're looking at diffusion capacity or TLCO uh, for this reason. Now, uh, people who actually do diving, they scuba diving, uh, they breathe through a cylinder, uh, which obviously has got uh, uh, oxygen and nitrogen. Uh, okay. So when they are actually, uh, you know, uh, going underwater, uh, pressurized, so the atmospheric pressure increases, and the nitrogen uh, moves into the into the solution phase of the tissues. But if this uh, divers were to ascend up very quickly, uh, then what happens is that the nitrogen comes out of the solution phase uh, as small bubbles into the joints and uh, other tissues. And this can actually cause complications, it can cause pain, it can also cause problems in the uh, brain and this is all known as uh, decompression sickness. And to do that, they are actually then put into a hyperbaric chamber or they are asked to actually ascend very slowly. Yeah, okay, so uh, this is the practical application of uh, knowing what the solubility is. There are two... Uh, coefficients which are linked with the uh, solubility uh, which you need to know this is Bunsen and Oswald uh, solubility coefficients so the Bunsen solubility coefficient uh, is uh, uh, defined as the volume of gas corrected to standard temperature pressure which dissolves in one unit volume of liquid at temperature concern where the partial pressure of the gas with the liquid is standard atmospheric pressure so the pressure is standardized to 760 millimeters of mercury and the temperature is you know at, at a particular temperature so it's standardized to the temperature and pressure whereas if we look at the Oswald solubility coefficient uh, here is it is defined as a coefficient it's defined as a volume of gas which dissolves in unit volume of liquid at the temperature concern and it does not uh, look at the pressure so Oswald solubility co uh, coefficient or OSC is independent of the pressure so uh, this is uh, what uh, is uh, Oswald solubility uh, constant so it's saying that the uh, uh, the volume amount of nitrogen dissolved say for example in a liter of water will remain the same irrespective of the pressure okay so at the same same temperature so Bunsen and also uh, coefficient uh, solubility coefficient um, they measure the amount of gas dissolved in unit volume of liquid at the temperature concerned uh, but Bunsen uh, coefficient is sensible that's how you remember it so it is standardized to the amount of uh, you know at the standard temperature and uh, pressure so it's standardized to stp whereas the oswald uh, is wild uh, it does not care about the standards so it's not standardized to the uh, as, uh, temperature and pressure so it does not take into account the pressure uh, in at all it's independent of the uh, pressure the another uh, aspect we need to know is about partition coefficients. So it is the ratio of the amount of substance present in one phase compared with another and the two phase being equal volume and in equilibrium. Okay, so this is known as the uh, partition coefficient. So if you look at the partition coefficient between the uh, gas form uh, and the blood, so we look at one liter of, so they need to be equal the phases need to be of equal volume so if you look at one liter of nitrous oxide in a gaseous form compared with uh, the uh, blood then what happens is that uh, on equilibration uh, 470 mls of nitrous oxide will dissolve right 
in the in the blood so we have seen seen this at 37 degrees celsius so this is the partition uh, coefficient uh, so the blood gas partition coefficient for nitrous oxide is 0 0.747 0 0.47 by 1 that is 0 0.47 so the uh, uh, difference between the partition coefficient and the Oswald solubility coefficient is that the relative order of the phase must be specified. Example for blood gas coefficient, just we've seen that. For nitro oxide is 0 0.47 by 1, uh, which is equal to 0 0.4. But the gas to blood coefficient, okay, so if you reverse it, it becomes 1 by uh, 0 0.47, that is equal to 2.1. So, uh, partition coefficients uh, uh, can also be applied to blood oil uh, partition uh, to liquids. So, example is the blood oil uh, partition coefficient. Um, so, this brings us to the second gas effect. Okay, so how we explain the second gas effect. So, if the uh, lung is filled with 80% nitrous oxide plus 1% of uh, a second gas, and if we take 50% of nitrous oxide, so V is absorbed because we said that uh, nitrous oxide is less soluble. So it will equate a lot more easily. So how does the use of nitrous oxide, so this explains how the use of nitrous oxide actually enhances induction uh, with a Voltaire anesthetic as compared with the air. So in this we see that uh, in the, this is the total 100% uh, volume and uh, uh, we got 1% of the uh, volatile anesthetic, that is the second gas, 90% of oxygen, and 80% of nitrous oxide. So let's assume that 50% uh, of nitrous oxide is taken up. So the nitrous oxide, uh, the compartment will now shrink to 40%. So what we left is now 60% of the compartment, right? So in this 60% of the compartment, what we have now is the one percent of the gas instead of being in hundred, it's now in sixty uh, percent of volume. So uh, this becomes one by sixteen to hundred. That is one point seven percent. Oxygen becomes uh, nineteen by sixteen to hundred. That is thirty one point seven percent. And nitrous oxide becomes uh, uh, you know uh, forty by sixty yeah, into hundred. That is sixty six point seven percent. Now this volume which was taken up, that 40%, now if we actually now fill up with the initial volume constant, that is with 1% of second gas, 90% of oxygen, and 80% of the nitrous oxide, what happens to the partial pressures uh, of these uh, or the constants? Okay, so when this happens, now what we have is we have now 1% uh, of the uh, second gas, uh, which is within 40%, so it, this now constitutes 0.4%, which is added to 1.7%, which is already there. So the second gas becomes 1.7 plus 0.4, that's 2.1%. So the partial pressure of the uh, second gas is now increased. And uh, look at the nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide is exactly now added up is 80 into 40 by 100, that is 32%. So this 32% is added to the 67.7% and that becomes 98.7%, uh, right? So, so you can actually see how this effect can be actually be used uh, to, uh, for induction purposes. Uh, so giving that, so there are two methods, the second uh, gas uh, you know, effect using nitrous oxide along with uh, the volt anesthetic helps in increasing the concentration of the uh, volatile anesthetic or the partial pressure of volatile within the alveoli and hence uh, into the uh, brain, um, you know, uptake is actually increased. Well, uptake is dependent on more on the, uh, uh, you know, the solubility, uh, but <clears throat> less the blood gas solubility, the uh, quicker they are actually taken up. So, we can increase the induction, or we have faster induction with nitrous oxide as uh, compared uh, with the air. The other other thing we actually saw uh, how we can increase the uh, 
uh, you know induction or reduce the time of induction is by over pressure so if we actually have higher concentration at higher pressure so that's how we over pressurize the circuit we keep the face mask tight uh, increase the flows, increase the concentration, so the partial pressures of the water anesthetic actually increases partial pressure. So if the partial pressure increases, the amount of gas dissolved increases. Okay, that was the Henry's law. So we use Henry's law and we use second gas effect uh, to hasten our induction of anesthesia. The last part is looking at the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the mayor overton theory so this is to do with the oil gas solubility now we know that the oil gas solubility of nitrous oxide is actually only 1.4 and because of this uh, it has got a very high mac but the uh, oil gas solubility of halothane is very high it is 220 okay so the anesthetic agent is actually taken up in the lipid bilayer this we're looking at the brain level and this is where they are actually taken up. And uh, there is also expansion of the lipid bilayer by the agents. And uh, so that uh, induces anesthesia. So halothane is very, very potent anesthetic. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, MAC is only 0 0.75. Uh, whereas uh, if you look at desflurane, its oil gas solubility is 18.7. Uh, it is taken up uh, by the a lipid bilayer and the um, you know expansion of the bilayer is much less as compared to halothane and hence the MAC is around six to seven percent so MAC depends on the oil gas solubility and you know this is basically about the theory of anesthesia so you need to know for that thank you for uh, listening to the lecture